Hello dear ones, this is my cat Lucy here. She's camera shy. There you go. She's an older cat. She hangs out with me in the mornings and then she goes out and does that wild thing outdoors in the afternoon. And it's like really early in the morning here right now. And so I thought I'd, I can't go outside and record right now. It's too dark, but I could sit out there, but I can't record. So I thought I'd record something inside for you because it's the reason I woke up so early. Things happen and, and we categorize them with our minds, something like, oh, this is just a coincidence, or oh, this is, this hostile thing happened to me during the day, you know? We set them these events aside from ourselves, and we, what we don't realize is that the divine is always working with us moment to moment in the now, um, to help us to learn what we need to learn. That's why we're here, you know. So an event that appears to be just a coincidence might be something that the divine has give, given as a gift to us to help us understand something, some lesson. And in the same way, what we might consider to be a hostile encounter during the day might have that same wonderful um, intention and it might have that, we might benefit from it greatly. So yesterday I came up with nothing. <laughs> the only thing I came up with was that, uh, that being around a cranky cat in the morning would help me to, to gain patience. <laughs> Not very useful, but... But true, she's pretty cranky in the morning, and I have to be patient. And uh, so, but but this morning, at about 4 a.m., I woke up, and I couldn't get back to sleep, and because I was feeling this wonderful clarity of mind, instead of going through all this subconscious, there was all this subconscious stuff that I've been going through, and dealing with, and it's been welling up from my my lower brain from my vital body and and I've been looking at it and I've been pretty much appalled <laughs> so but this morning I woke up and my mind was clear for once and um, I got to thinking about a life purpose the reason we incarnate and um, uh, and I got to thinking about how we live in a hollow game and how the moment we're born and the moment that we pass are carefully arranged to help us to achieve our soul purpose. And so it's not like we're, it's not random, you know, it's, it's a gift of the divine to us, the, the, the length of our life, the beginning and end of our life, and all of the things that happen in between, these are all with one intention is to help us rediscover our connection with the divine. and uh, But we may have a particular soul purpose. Each person has their own soul purpose for, for, this, for this journey into this dense physical reality. You know what I mean? So um, uh, I got to thinking about how it's all a hologram or a hologram and uh, consisting of audiovisual well, and other senses combined into bright pictures. And uh, then I got to thinking about clearing, all the clearing work that we're doing, and how these, these bright pictures of past traumas, both in this lifetime and other lifetimes, get stuck in our physical bodies here and there. I had one here once, and, and other places in my physical, like my um, the back of my heart. And, in my shoulders and different places for different people and so it, it's like uh, at the moment when we um, this trauma happens uh, it has the, the, the thrust of the lesson for, our, for this particular lifetime is it's so intense that instead of processing it at the moment that it happens we, we store it someplace in our body it's an audiovisual file. It might have like smell also or some other sense in it. And and it's 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 actually stored in our physical body. 
until the time when we can open up this gift from the divine that seems so much like the opposite. It seems like a hostile event that happens to us, but in fact, it contains our life, the, the, um, the wisdom that we, that we need to attain in this lifetime is folded up like a tiny flower inside of that stored trauma, what we call trauma, mistakenly. So the process of clearing is really the, that we've all been going through, the whole earth has been going through, is really a process of opening the gifts that the divine gives us. It's not getting rid of something bad, it's finding out something good. You know? So then I thought about my life, and I thought, there are certain like very vivid memories that I have, like snapshots of events, could be really good, but lots of times it's the things that were really, really bad that happened. And, and there are not that many of them, maybe 10, maybe 20, really, really uh, dramatic moments in my life, starting with the moment I was born. <laughs> I remember very clearly. And so, and so I thought, I'll just review these audiovisual files and I'll find out my sole purpose, you know. Because it, it's not that hard, really. It's just that we have a tendency to view what's happening from the standpoint of, of ego as a threat to us. But in fact, it's, it's a gift. It's a present from the divine to help us remember our, our joy and our, our, what we really are. Our, you know what I mean? So I thought about these things, and all in the space of a couple of minutes in this moment of clarity that I had at 4 a.m., I came up with every single audiovisual event that, had, that I had um, buried, and I came up with my life purpose, too. It was very obvious from the very first, the very first thing that happened the moment I was born, and all the things that, that followed that were traumatic had to do with one particular um, a soul gift that I wanted to receive, and that was to to love universally, very clear. And in that way, uh, when I thought of it like that, um, the things that have happened in my life that are outside the norm of, of society, society has certain notions. For instance, the notion one should live a long, happy, married life and have children that will take care of us in our old age. That's, that's the social norm. And my life has not been like that at all. I mean, it just hasn't fit the norm, you know. And I would venture to say that almost everyone, I don't know where they get this norm from because a lot of people don't fit it. <laughs> quite a few people. And the people that do uh, like role play the norm don't fit the notion that that, that, that uh, um, very seldom do I find really happily married couples with children. <laughs> Even if they are happily married, then when the children come, things happen. You know, all kinds of things happen in life. So some way or another, we achieve our sole purpose despite the fact it, we're always holding ourselves up against uh, some phantom notion of how happiness can be achieved that's created really by the, the subconscious, the uh, mind of the world, the uh, um, subconscious thought cloud of the world comes up with these ideas, not through awareness, but through um, osmosis, I guess you'd say. Unaware osmosis. So, the thing is, we have a choice. That's as I see it. We can measure our lives uh, in terms of the unconscious thought processes of other people, which create what I call a social norm. And we can consider we're successful or not successful according to that unconscious notion. Or we can take the conscious approach. We can we can review our, our audiovisual files and determine where we are with this uncovering and discovering our soul purpose for this incarnation. So, 
uh, choices. It's a good thing. <laughs>